Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us here today as we celebrate the graduation of the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Department Regional Training Academy Class Number 41. My name is Lieutenant Brad Cooksey, and I will be this afternoon's Master of Ceremonies. On behalf of the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Department, it is my distinct pleasure to present to you the cadets of class number 41. everyone in the room uh, rise for the singing of the national anthem and stay in prison <coughs> for the invocation by Chaplain Todd Patton. you to join with me in a word of prayer. Father, we are so thankful that we get to witness this time where these brave men and women have stepped up to the call to answer that call you placed in them to be your servants out there. Lord, to hold the line, to uh, bring evil to justice, to fight the darkness that is out there. I pray that you would protect each and every one of them and their families. Father, I pray that they would be reminded that this badge that they will wear is not just a piece of metal, but it is part of their very life. So all of the morals and the ethics and the standards that will be required of them, I pray that you help them step up to that and even rise above it. Lord, please protect them, especially in our society today. May your will be done. We thank you for all of the uh, hard work that's gone in, all the instructor staff. And we thank you for the leaders of our department and uh, their wisdom and their decisions and their care for their people. I pray, Lord, that that would continue on. 
Thank you for all that you do and for this great day that we get to honor these men and women. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you all. You may be seated. Ronald Reagan once said, we remember those who were called upon to give all a person can give. And we remember those who were prepared to make that sacrifice if it were demanded of them in the line of duty, though it never was. Most of all, we remember the devotion and gallantry with which all of them ennobled their nation as they became champions of a noble cause. At this time, I would like to ask anyone who has served or is currently serving in the United States Armed Forces to please stand and be recognized. I'm going to take your seats. Thank you. I would also like to recognize any retired, local, state, and federal law enforcement officers, deputies, or agents who are either with us or watching the ceremony from home. Thank you for your service. For the past several months, our cadets have been taught and trained, honed and sharpened, drilled and driven. Many have been pushed beyond what they thought were their own limitations. These cadets have excelled and conquered adversity with grit and vigor. I hope that these cadets have learned from their training. Our staff videographer, Elizabeth Faquetta, has been documenting the progress of Class 41 and has prepared a video presentation for you all. Roll the video, please. Two up three, eyes on me. As the lieutenant said, I'm Drill Inspector Tapp. This is Drill Inspector Deering. From this point on, you should refer to us as Drill Inspector, as we have earned that title through years of service exemplified by commitment, honor, and courage. As our greatest honor and our greatest act of service, we have been tasked with the creation of the deputies and officer of the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Department Regional Training Academy, class number 41. As you will learn, a critical skill of any truly successful law enforcement officer is the ability to control, redirect, and influence other people's immediate behavior. In order to successfully apply this skill, you must first be able to control your own behavior, regardless of whatever challenge you may face. Over the course of the next 25 weeks, and in order to survive the next 25 years, you will master each of these skills. In doing so, you will be tested as you have never been tested before. You will be pushed to your mental, physical, and emotional limits. You will want to quit, to give up on yourself, on us, and worst of all, on each other. But in that moment of deepest pain, when you are forced to decide how much you are really, truly willing to give to be here, know this, that we will not give up on you. For together, we intend to make up these of you. And while we will give you the skills necessary to go forward with courage, we cannot fight this battle for you. As we test your limits, you may even begin to see us as the enemy. But I assure you, we are here to see you succeed. Within this academy, we will seek to strip you of your weaknesses. For outside of these confines, others will seek to serve you in your Should you earn your title, not a deputy or officer, you will be entering into an entirely different world. You will leave this academy a different person than you are today. You will likely not recognize yourself. You will be tasked with working proactively in one of the most violent places in our country and at the close of the most violent, murderous year our home has ever seen. Just by wearing a uniform, even as you wear it right now, you're making yourself a target for these criminals and murderers. For you will represent the unstoppable pursuit of justice. I've heard it said that the wicked flee when no man pursues. But understand this, that we here shall pursue. So long as one amongst us still draws breath, no wicked man shall find refuge in our home. For while we 
greed, we shall attack. During your time, you must choose each day new, knowing what evil awaits you. To get up, to put on that uniform, and walk out into that darkness, accepting your role as guardian of the light, protector of the weak, and a pursuer of the wicked. You must reaffirm each and every day, no matter the cost, that you will always choose the hard right. Facing greed, you will be generous. Facing adversity, you will adapt and overcome. Facing vice, you will refuse to be tainted by it. Facing those that would seek to prey upon the weak, you will be strong. Facing those that would seek to do us violence, not if, but when. And every single time, you will prevail. You will face many challenges, but you will never turn your back. You will never stop fighting. This career, this calling, will cost you many things. Not least of which will be blood, sweat, and tears. So I ask each of you now, if you are ready to pay this fight, to accept this challenge, then on your feet, upon the time to call out, you will move to the ball with a purpose, intent in body, mind, and spirit.
Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, always so well done. Drill instructor. Touch it. Go. Replace. Go. Lift. Lift. Forward. At this time, I would like to take an opportunity to introduce our command staff and distinguished guests sitting on stage. Sheriff's Executive Assistant, Michelle Martinez. Bosque Farms Police Department Lieutenant, Patrick Fickey. Captain of the Administrative Services Division, Lori Carrillo. District Court Chief Judge, Stan Whitaker. United States Attorney John C. Anderson, Chief Deputy of the Administrative Services Division Brian Lindley, Chief Deputy of the Field Services Division Joshua Campos, Chief Deputy of the Criminal Investigations Division Justin Dunlap, Under Sheriff of the Administrative Bureau Sid Covington, under Sheriff of the Operations Bureau, Larry Gordon. And then I'd like to share with you a few words before I introduce the final member of our command staff. Sheriff Manuel Gonzalez III has devoted his adult life to the service of our country and community. Sheriff Gonzalez has fostered an environment where staff can perform at their natural best, which has transformed the Sheriff's Department to a model law enforcement agency. The Sheriff's vision and steadfast leadership has strengthened community relations, maintained public trust, and broadened community relations. He is committed to implementing law enforcement's best practices, utilizing modern technology and providing personnel with professional development opportunities to maintain vigilance and keep them safe. The Sheriff is extremely grateful for his family's love and support, fully acknowledging his wife, Elaine, his three children, Manuel, Sophia, and Isaiah, for their inspiration. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the podium Sheriff Manuel Gonzalez III for these opening remarks. Thank you, Lieutenant. And uh, thanks. I want to thank everybody for attending today. Uh, we're in unusual times. I think the only thing that I can say uh, in terms of having a mask on is that. I know uh, the cadets are probably smiling and there's not a, a thing that the uh, DIs can do about it. So that, that's not a bad thing, but we want to congratulate them. I want to congratulate the staff. I think everybody can see from, from uh, the presentation that the uh, DI uh, gave there that we could have made a better selection. So I'd, I'd like to personally acknowledge uh, Kevin Taft. Can you please stand up so we can give you a round of applause, please? Thank you. You know, uh, when we started this class, uh, we were under uh, a lot of different circumstances uh, as a community, as a country, and things have changed. And it changed and, you know, we kind of had to make light of some of the things that this class went through. So, you know, it'll be known forever as a COVID-19 class. And that being said, we've been placed in this unusual search, uh, situation with Crime in Albuquerque being three times higher than the national rate with the pand health pandemic that's going on throughout the world. And also with the civil unrest, with uh, things that are going on with police misconduct and behavior. And if that wasn't enough to include the, uh, the economy uh, being in distress. And so for more than ever, I, I would say that 
the citizens of this community and this country are suffering more than ever. And they need some type of relief. And I say to you that uh, I didn't see any person from this uh, academy running away from uh, their positions when all these things surfaced. Uh, I, I'm so proud of you for not, for taking a, uh, and, and really uh, putting your mind, heart, minds, and soul into what you're gonna do. Uh, we need the type of people that are gonna give everything of themselves. And I know when I first talked to the, uh, uh, the D2Cs now, or some, seem to be, I tell them I only expect one thing out of you, and that's everything. Because that's what this public needs, that's what this, the, the citizens need, and that's what they're gonna frankly expect from you. They're suffering. They're suffering because they're losing their jobs, and we have jobs. And they're losing their businesses, and we're in a business where, where they need us, and they need service. So for us, we're in a good position. The only thing I wanted to stress, because I, I'm not here to give a speech, but it was just a simple message. And I, in full disclosure, I'm, I'm Catholic, so I don't want to get excommunicated from the church. So I kept it really simple. And I kept it, I thought it was very profound. It was, it's very short. It says, whoever wants to be great must be a servant. Mark 10, 43. And so for me, I, again, you came in at a, the perfect time. The time where people need you, and where you can be great. <clears throat> but it has to be selfless. You have to put yourself in front of the danger, the adversity. You have to become very empathetic. And it's gonna be hard for some of you because not all of you have the life experience that uh, many of the senior deputies or officers have in this community. Because a lot of people's families are suffering, you're gonna to have to be able to understand that they're trying to feed their children they're trying to do things and their kids are being socially deprived because they're at home. A lot of them are suffering mentally. So I want you to be cognizant of that because it's much different than when the last class graduated. So my, my message is to you is to do this with all your heart, mind, and soul. Uh, you'll need to. That's the only way you'll get through this career. <clears throat> the last four words of the oath are, are very important in that it says, so help me God. You want to make sure that that is definitely in everything you do. I, I can tell you from a personal, professional, and a political standpoint that I get attacked occasionally, and, and I don't mind. It's all part of what I do, and uh, I always dwell on those last four words because <clears throat> I sometimes have to actually laugh because, uh, again, I dwell on those four words, and I actually dwell on the truth. So. It doesn't bother you, it actually inspires me to want to do more. Hopefully this job will help you, or I shouldn't say job, this calling inspires you to do the same. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, Sheriff. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have tonight's keynote speaker. United States Attorney for the District of New Mexico, John C. Anderson. Mr. Anderson became the 46th U.S. Attorney for the District of New Mexico on February 23, 2018. President Donald J. Trump nominated Mr. Anderson to be U.S. Attorney in November 2017, and the U.S. Senate unanimously confirmed his nomination on February 15, 2018. As U.S. Attorney, Mr. Anderson serves as the top federal law enforcement official in New Mexico. Mr. Anderson previously served as the Assistant U.S. Attorney in the District of New Mexico from 2008 to 2013, primarily focusing on the investigation and prosecution of white collar crime. Mr. Anderson received his AB from Bowdoin College and his JD cum laude from Fordham University School of Law in New York City. Mr. Anderson clerk for Judge Paul J. Kelly Jr. of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Tenth Circuit in Santa Fe, New Mexico from 2003 to 2004. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming up today's keynote speaker, United States Attorney John C. Anderson. Thank you very much for that kind introduction and uh, perhaps the best thing about 
um, being honored with the distinction of serving as the keynote speaker this afternoon is the ability to take my mask off for a few minutes. And um, that, of course, uh, leads me to the temptation to be very long-winded today, which I will do my very best to resist. Uh, Sheriff Gonzalez, distinguished guests, members of the command staff, Judge Whitaker, proud family members, friends, loved ones, and, of course, graduating cadets. Thank you so much for extending me the invitation to be the keynote speaker at your graduation. It is a distinct honor to be here. I want to begin by echoing the sentiment that we saw in the very nice video that we just watched and by commending each and every one of you for the hard work and dedication that contributed to the achievement for which you are being rightly recognized today. Each and every one of you were undoubtedly taxed mentally, emotionally, and physically. You survived those challenges, you rose to the occasion, and you demonstrated yourselves to be among the select few who have risen to the standard required for entry into this profound law enforcement calling. So congratulations to each and every one of you. I would also suggest to you, however, that as you sit here today at your graduation and on the precipice of a promising law enforcement career, that in reality, the challenge for you has just begun. In fact, I believe that in my lifetime, and, and almost certainly uh, in yours, uh, there has not been a more difficult time to serve as a law enforcement officer. Indeed, many of your friends and your family members watching the news, reading the newspaper, would ask you why you would want to embark on a career in law enforcement at this point in time. And it's certainly a valid question. Between the public health situation that we are facing, certainly an unprecedented one, between the civil unrest in our communities, between the movements to defund or even abolish the police departments, the general animosity and disrespect that is being shown toward law enforcement officers is, I believe, both troubling and unprecedented. At the same time, the range of social ills that ultimately fall into the lap of our law enforcement officers is greater than ever before. No longer are law enforcement officers tasked only with simply enforcing the law. Instead, society at large is too often asking you to be a problem solver for many of the ills that confront us, whether it's poverty, homelessness, mental health, what have you. We are looking to law enforcement to solve these problems. But make no mistake, the profession on which you are entering today remains a noble calling and an honorable profession. And in a day when serving as a law enforcement officer is more challenging than ever, I'd like to offer you a few thoughts that I hope will allow you to take heart and take confidence in the career choice that you have made and the calling on which you embark today. And my message is this. Oftentimes, when society has problems, and when those come to the fore, as we've seen in recent civil unrest, problems like racism, inequality in society, which are all undoubtedly real problems that need to be confronted by society on a global basis, too often, society projects those problems onto its law enforcement officers. Racism is a real problem in society. I think that is undeniable. And it is one that together, as a community, we need to confront. But too often, the message is that that is a problem of law enforcement. And I stand here to tell you that it is not. It is a problem that together, as a community, we need to address. And the suggestion that we will solve racism by defunding the police, by abolishing the police, is simply misguided. The idea that we project onto our law enforcement, the, the sentiments that we as a society have about ourselves as a whole, is an old one. And I'll share with you an experience that I had on the opposite side of that coin about 20 years ago when I was in law school. And as was mentioned in the introduction, I went to law school in New York City. And in the fall of 2001, I was a second year law student on the west side of Manhattan. 
And on September 11, 2001, I will never forget uh, the images of the planes crashing into the Twin Towers just two or three miles away from where I was going to law school. And living and going to school in New York City, I was part of a community that was hit extraordinarily hard by the horrifying and nefarious events of that day. And after the immediate shock wore off, after the flames were put out and the devastation was controlled, I've never seen a community come together like New York City did and like the entire United States did in the wake of that terrible day. And one of the things that I remember distinctly was that you could not walk by a police station or a fire station in New York City without stepping over the piles of flowers that were piled up in front of those police stations to recognize the great and terrible sacrifice that were made by hundreds of our first responders and our law enforcement officers. Never has there been a prouder time for law enforcement. And I tell you that the people of New York City felt themselves pulling together in response to those horrible events. And as a, and as a result, we put our pride and our faith and our happiness into our law enforcement, and rightly so. You will hardly see a, a braver display of law enforcement or, or first responders than we saw in New York, in Washington, and around the country on that day. And I would submit to you that as justified as that is, what we are seeing today in our society is somewhat the opposite. We are confronting the fact that in society we have problems. We are dealing with racism. We are dealing with poverty. We are dealing with public health crisis. But those are, again, our issues as a community. They are not your limited to law enforcement. And that is not to say by any means that law enforcement is perfect. Like members of any profession, we have failings. We have members of the profession that do not live up to the high standards that we set for ourselves. And those are rightly, we are rightly called out for those failings and those are rightly acknowledged. But to suggest that the problems in our society can be fixed simply by, again, defunding or abolishing the police department, I believe is a misguided suggestion and a misguided approach to solving what are very real problems. This is not to say, again, that you bear no responsibility for your own conduct. To the contrary, as law enforcement officers, you have a tremendous ability, and indeed you are leaders in your communities. As you sit there with your, with your badges and your uniforms, proud of your graduation day, please acknowledge and recognize that you are leaders. You are models of what we want citizens to be. And when you fulfill that mission, People will follow you. They will model your behavior. And as you go out and you demonstrate the highest virtues of citizenship and of law enforcement in your communities and on your streets, you will change society. People will follow you. They will follow the behavior that you model. So please recognize that your example will not go unheeded. It's critical that you recognize that because you can be a tremendous force for change in your communities. And to the extent there are problems, you can be a leader in bringing about an amelioration of those conditions. I'd like to spend a few minutes talking to you today about some of the critical operations that you are entering into as Bernalillo County Sheriff's deputies. As Sheriff Gonzalez correctly mentioned, your community, Bernalillo County and Albuquerque, is facing what I believe to be an unprecedented crisis in violent crime that has only gotten worse since we entered into this public health COVID-19 pandemic. You're called upon to serve in an era of rising violent crime that is gonna put yourself uh, at, at danger, and all while doing it, with the restrictions that come with this public health crisis. But as United States Attorney for the District of New Mexico, I want to assure you uh, that you are a critical component of the solution to that violent crime problem that is plaguing our 
county and our community. And you could not be entering into that challenge at a more important time. Many of you may have heard and seen the President and the Attorney General on Wednesday announce the initiation of Operation Legend, a law enforcement operation aimed at reducing the staggering rate of violent crime in our communities. We are coming off of 2019, where we had a record number of murders. We are on pace to exceed the number of shooting deaths that we had last year. So we are truly confronting a pandemic of gun violence in our communities. And the President and the Attorney General are committed to reducing that through federal partnerships with our state and local partners. And we have no more important partner in that effort than the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office. And I would thank Sheriff Gonzalez for his partnership in that respect and for representing the city of Albuquerque uh, at that announcement earlier this week. So thank you, Sheriff. And I want to thank uh, each and every one of you for standing ready to answer that call. Uh, I am hopeful that each of you will have the opportunity to work with a strong partnership of federal, state, and local law enforcement to do your part to combat gun violence. There is nothing I would submit that is more important than that effort for our community right now. And I want you to remember, and it's something that was really brought home to me this week uh, when I attended the announcement of Operation Legend at the White House, I had the honor to meet the V. Hill family, uh, Sam V. Hill and his son, state police officers, Raul and Kevin. And my interactions with them, the time I got to spend with them, hear about their lives, hear about, of course, their mother, Jacqueline V. Hill, who was senselessly killed in her own driveway leaving for the gym, brought home to me the reality that too often, we become numb to the, to, to the statistics that we see each day. We become numb to the rising murder rate in our community. And meeting with them brought home to me that each of those statistics, each of those numbers that we see has a family behind it, a family like the V Hills, a story like the V Hills. And your efforts to go out into the community to reduce gun violence, to take those very small number, a very small number of violent actors off of our streets will save lives. It will allow another family not to have to tell the same story that Sam V. Hill and his sons are telling. And please, as you go out into the community and as you work on these anti-violence task forces and as you try to take guns and violent actors off our streets, Please don't forget why you are doing it. Please don't forget families like the B. Hills who lost a loved one to gun violence. And please don't forget your successes. We don't hear about successes. We hear about murders in the newspaper. We never hear about the murders that police prevented by taking guns off the streets. That's not newsworthy, often enough. But please don't forget those contributions that you make each and every day. They are appreciated by members of the community. I can't tell you, even since this announcement Wednesday, how many people have come up to me expressing support for the effort to reduce gun violence, who understand that gun violence in our communities are too high. So you have support out there, even though too often there is focused criticism of law enforcement. I want you to know that the U.S. Attorney's Office stands behind you, stands behind your efforts to reduce gun violence, and is proud to partner with you as you embark on this profession and this calling. I wish you the very best. I know you will make Bernalillo County proud. I know you will make the sheriff proud. I know you'll make all of us proud. So on this, your gradu graduation day, I congratulate you. I commend you. Godspeed and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the powerful words. It's a privilege and honor to have you here. <clears throat>
During the past 25 weeks, the cadets of Class 41 have received the very best training possible. They received this training from professionals who provided 100% of themselves every day to further the training efforts of our academy. These professionals have prepared the cadets for the next step in their careers. As the cadets leave the confines of the Regional Training Academy, they are prepared to take their newly acquired skills out into the real world. I would like to take this opportunity to formally thank the training staff for their dedication and efforts. I would also ask that you please hold your applause until I acknowledge all members of the staff, and if I could direct everyone's attention to the other side of the auditorium. Uh, first, uh, our Academy Supervisor, Sergeant Eton LeCount, Advanced In-Service Training Supervisor, Sergeant Teresa Tafoya, <laughs> Teresa Sabo, Advanced Training Instructor, Deputy John McCauley, Advanced Training Instructor, Deputy Sam Rodriguez, Recruiter, Deputy Anton Maltby, Recruiter, Deputy Jennifer Garcia. Our training videographer, Elizabeth Vaquero, who is moving uh, throughout the auditorium. And our lead background investigator, Rodney Gillum. And lastly, our academy administrative assistant, Judy Tobias. Thank you all, your outstanding team. It is my honor and privilege to introduce to you the two individuals who exemplify service and professionalism. Their integrity and fortitude is without question. During the past 25 weeks, these are the two deputies to whom the cadets became the most attached, the drill instructors, or the DIs. Drill instructor Kevin Taft and drill instructor Brayson Deering, would you please give them a well-deserved round of applause? The state of New Mexico requires 677 hours of basic training prior to certification. Our academy conducts one and a half times that at approximately 1,000 hours of basic and advanced training. To conduct an academy of this magnitude requires monumental effort and cannot be accomplished without the assistance of the numerous adjunct instructors who provided Class 41 with the very best instruction. For those of you who had taught or assisted with the instruction of any of the classes conducted at the academy, and on the other side of those cameras, we would like to recognize you now for your efforts. Thank you for assisting with the Academy. As you may know, the Academy is the only start of a learning process that will continue for each of these cadets for many years to come. I now want to recognize the people who will take over for the DIs and the continued training of our cadets. These individuals will sacrifice much over the next three months to ensure that every cadet entrusted to their instruction is ready to go into service of their own. These individuals are the field training officers, the FTOs, and uh, for those of you on the other side of the camera as well, we recognize you and we applaud you for your efforts. <laughs> During the academy, much of the cadets' performance is graded, scored, and ranked as a result, several cadets have been recognized and awarded for their exceptional performance and various skills throughout their training. At this time, I would like to ask each recipient to stand and be recognized for your performance, and please hold your applause until I have announced all award winners. Academic Achievement, Jonathan Scraw. Driving Proficiency, Daniel Sandoval. Firearm Proficiency, Leroy Regalado and physical fitness, Jonathan Scroll again. Those are your award winners, congratulations you for. <laughs> you may be seated. In addition to these awards, there is a cadet of class 41 who will be recognized for our 291 award. Presenting the 291 award is Sergeant Eton LeCount. Thank you, Lieutenant. Good afternoon, everybody. 
The 291 Award is in honor of one of our fallen deputies in the line of duty. Her name was Angelique Garcia. 291 represents her man number, which has been retired. The recipient of this award will receive $291 donated by the Bernalillo County Deputy Sheriff's Association to spend on any law enforcement gear to help kickstart their career. The award winner was nominated by their fellow classmates by considering the following characteristics. A never give up attitude. They gave 100% effort during the academy in all facets of education and training. They were a team player. They were a team motivator. Angelique Garcia was a graduate of class 17. During this class, she wasn't the top shot. She wasn't the best at PT or the best driver, but she was the spirit of the class, consistently pushing everyone to do their best and never giving up on anything. She always had a great attitude and a great big smile while accomplishing the academy. The person who best represents this for class 41, as voted on by their peers, is Richard Anglada. Last but not least is the award for valedictorian. This award goes to the person who has achieved the highest overall class average in the areas of firearms, physical fitness, driving, and academics. This cadet will also have the distinction of being number one in seniority for his class. I please welcome to the podium valedictorian cadet Jonathan Scraw. Good afternoon to the command and the academy staff. Good afternoon to those who cannot be here and are watching via live stream. Class 41 would love if you all could have been in attendance with us today. I'd like to thank the command staff for making the academy possible. I'd also like to thank the academy staff and all the instructors. The academy would not be what it is without each and every one of you. A special thank you to Deputy McCauley, Deputy Rodriguez, and to Detective Proctor. You guys have been there with us throughout it all. I'd also like to thank the lead defensive tactics instructor, Detective Mora. You had a major positive impact on class 41. You took a lot of extra time with us throughout defensive tactics and truly cared about each cadet. Thank you to Deputy Bartram. You really took a lot of time with class 41 throughout different portions of the academy. You gave us a lot of extra tools for our futures ahead. Finally, a big thank you to our drill instructor Taft and drill instructor Deering. You guys are the reason we are sitting here on the stage today. You guys took your time, broke us down, and rebuilt us as Bernalillo County deputies. Class 41 is forever grateful to you both. I wish I could name all the people that contributed as part of the academy and are part of the academy staff. It takes all of you to make, it an, make an academy of this caliber. I've, I've often been asked by many of my friends, how is the academy? I never really knew how to answer this question. I would often give the responses of it's hard to explain or you'll have to find it out for yourselves. It wasn't until a few weeks ago I knew exactly how to answer this question. The first thing that pops in my mind is a phrase I've heard a few times throughout my life. However, I could never fully grasp this idea until especially now, after writing the speech and considering the experiences we have had throughout the academy and looking forward to our futures of where our past may take us next. The academy is by far the most fun I never want to have again. For those of you who have attended a sheriff's or police academy or even a military boot camp, you know exactly what this means for you. For those of you who have not, I will try to explain what this means to me. There are so many examples they won't all fit into this speech. Through all the smokings, or I mean PT and creative team building, 
Class 41 would always find the humor in it all. The two perfect examples are the day we got tasered and the day we got OC sprayed. Getting tasered was for sure an out-of-body experience and by no means was fun. But you know what was fun? Watching 20 other cadets get tasered. It was absolutely hilarious. We all had a great time, but I can say wholeheartedly, I, will, I don't ever want to do that again. The day we got OC sprayed was the perfect storm. It was by far the worst experience of my life so far. To make it even better, I had to be at my brother's writing rehearsal a few hours after. While we were going through the proceedings, the OCD spray reactivated. I was sitting in the pew, holding my eyes open with both my hands and blowing them, and blowing them in them with my mouth. I let them shut and reopen them, and this is when I noticed the priest keeping a sharp eye on me. It was a rough day, but looking back, it was pretty funny. That's the kind of fun I never want to have again. This pertains to so much more. It pertains to the hard-learned lessons or getting kicked in the butt and laughing it off and finding the humor in it all. It's about getting up, learning our lesson, and making fun of the mistakes we once made. And a lot of the times these mistakes we made are hilarious, and even though we get knocked down, we had a lot of fun looking back. Through it all, Class 41 had a knack of sticking together, picking each other up, and dusting each other off. The most fun I never want to have again. This phrase speaks to our futures as well. We gain no benefit from re repeating the so-called fun we had uh, in the academy. Our drill instructors and instructors have given us the skills and wisdom necessary to adapt to the new challenges we face ahead in our futures. Now that is the fun that we are about to experience moving forward in our careers. We are ready for these challenges. Class 41, you all know what you have signed up for. So I leave you with this quote. Out of every 100 men, 10 shouldn't be there. <clears throat> 80 are just targets, nine are the real, real fighters, and we are lucky to have them, for they make the battle. Ah, but the one. One is a warrior, and he will bring the others back. Class 41, strive to be that one, not only for yourselves, but for your fellow deputies and all the citizens of Vernon County. Thank you for listening. Be safe, and God bless each and every one of you. Administering the oath of office for Class 41 is the Honorable Chief Judge Stan Whitaker. Judge Whitaker grew up in Albuquerque and graduated from Sandia High School in 1975. He attended University of Kansas, excuse me, Kansas from 1975 to 1980 and graduated with a bachelor's degree in education. He then graduated from the University of New Mexico School of Law in 1989 with the Juris Doctrine. Judge Whitaker then worked as an assistant district attorney, felony child abuse, family crimes prosecutor with Bernalillo County District Attorney's Office from 1993 to 1996 where he prosecuted child sexual and physical abuse in Bernalillo County. He was then a special commissioner for domestic violence with the second judicial district court from 1996 to 2002, where he issued civil domestic violence orders of protection. The judge then worked as an assistant United States attorney for the Firearms Violent Crimes Division from 2002 to 2006, where he prosecuted federal violent crimes in Indian country throughout the state of New Mexico. He was then appointed to the criminal court with second judicial district court in June 2006 to present where he presided over felony criminal matters. He then became the chief judge of the second judicial district court in January 2019 where he currently presides. Your honor, class is yours, sir. And will faithfully and impartially, and will 
faithfully and impartially discharge the duties, discharge the duties of said office, of of said office to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, Your Honor. Sheriff Gonzalez, as the Director of Training for the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Department Regional Training Academy, I hereby certify and attest that these cadets have exceeded the requirements necessary to be, asserted, to be certified as peace officers as per New Mexico State Statute, Section 2976. Cadets, prepare to receive your badges in recognition of your accomplishment. Right. Hey. Four. Four. I'll never hear it. I'll never hear the end of that. Yep. That's right. Learn from the best possible. Do we have our additional pinners to step down to the near the side of the stage? Cadets, uh, when you come up, uh, you may remove your mask to receive your badge and take a picture with the sheriff and your pinner. Our first new deputy second class, Richard Inglot, being pinned by father and retired state police lieutenant, as well as former chief of Talos PD, Rick Inglot. Next, deputy second class to be pinned, Joshua Baca, being pinned by stepsister and BCSO deputy, Catherine Small. Deputy Second Class, Stephen Butler, to be pinned by Sheriff Gonzalez.
Sheriff's Deputy Second Class to be pinned. Lorena Chavez, pinned by Sheriff Gonzalez. Deputy Second Class Noah Chavez to be pinned by uncle and retired BCSO Chief Deputy Jason Katz. Deputy Second Class Enrique Cruz to be pinned by Sheriff Gonzalez. Deputy Second Class, Weston Curry. Deputy Second Class, Dimitri Gomez. Next to be pinned, Deputy Second Class, Delaney Grimes. Deputy Second Class, Lorenzo Herrera. Pinned by Stepfather and BCSO Deputy Chris Mancha. Next to be pinned, Deputy Second Class, Brian Lassley. To be pinned by mentor and BCSO under Sheriff, Sid Covington.
Deputy Second Class Kendra Linte, who will be pinned by Mother and is led Police Department Detective Kathy Lucero. Next to be pinned, Deputy Second Class Jordan McGee, to be pinned by Father and Albuquerque Fire Rescue Lieutenant John McGee. Next to be pinned, Officer Martin Morales. Pinned by Bossy Farms Lieutenant Patrick Fickey. Next to be pinned, Deputy Second Class, Leroy Reese Regalon. Next to be pinned, Deputy Second Class, Brandon Reynolds. Next to be pinned, Deputy Second Class, Seth Romero. Next to be pinned, Deputy Second Class, Daniel Sandoval.
Next to be pinned, Deputy Second Class Jonathan Scrum. Next to be pinned, Deputy Second Class Nicholas Arthur Throckmorton. Last to be pinned today, Deputy Second Class Caleb R. Wenger. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present to you the deputies of Class 41. Displayed up here on stage, you will notice a flag that sits next to Class 41. During the 20 years, the past 20 years, the cadet classes of the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Department have made it a tradition to design and display the guide on the flag in a manner that represents their class motto and the spirit of the Sheriff's Department. The guide on is one of the first and most important items a cadet class takes responsibility for. It presents unity and a responsibility to something bigger than the individual. As the cadets go through their training program, they are constantly reminded by the guide on and their family that we as law enforcement officers strive to maintain amongst each other. They are reminded of the sacrifice we make to give ourselves to a life of service. At this time, Class 41 will retire the class guide on. The retirement of the guide on signifies the passing of the torch back to the regional training academy. As we prepare to present the next group of individuals, with the challenge of becoming professional law enforcement officers. Senior drill instructor Taft, retire the guy. Senior drill instructor, give your final dismissal.
to our dear friends, family, and colleagues who are under, on the other side of those cameras. Although you aren't physically here with us, we share this day with you. Be very proud of these new deputies as they begin their life of service. You are just as responsible for their success today. Thank you, God bless, and have a wonderful day.